Damian Lillard is a Milwaukee Buck. Adrian Wojnarowski broke NBA Twitter on Wednesday, September 27th with crazy news that yes, the Portland Trailblazers were finalizing a deal with Damian Lillard. Hey there everyone, welcome to Utility Sports. Really excited for this breakdown on the three-team trade that again broke NBA Twitter this Wednesday where we saw DeAndre Ayton routed to the Portland Trailblazers as a lot of reports were kind of rumored to be a possibility. And then you saw the Milwaukee Bucks being the team that jumped in to the Damian Lillard sweepstakes. The Miami Heat were not the team to ultimately land Damian Lillard as so many expected to happen this offseason. And the Phoenix Suns were the third team to hop in, facilitate a trade. They've been super busy since owner Matt Ishbia bought the team in February. So we've seen them make a ton of trades. We're gonna break it down, give some of my trade grades for all three of these teams and kind of how I think it impacts the NBA. A lot of people were still interested in this video. Yes, I know a lot of you probably took in some content yesterday. Hopefully you did. I was not able to get to a video yesterday, but here it is today. So I hope you guys do enjoy. And ultimately let's jump into it here now with the trade details. And like I said, Adrian Wojnarowski broke NBA Twitter. Damian Lillard, according to Adrian Wojnarowski, goes to Milwaukee as part of a three-team deal with Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, Tumani Kamara, a 2029 unprotected Milwaukee first-round pick, and unprotected Milwaukee swap rights in 2028 and 2030, heading to the Portland Trailblazers. Phoenix lands Yusuf Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson. So we're going to break all of that down here in this one and kind of what each team's getting, what each team gave up and really lay it out in a clear fashion and then ultimately give my grades on it. So first let's start with the Milwaukee Bucks who receive of course the star player in the deal, guard Damian Lillard will be teammates with Giannis Antetokounmpo. Of course the two of them reportedly did have some interest in playing with each other. People speculated that could have been in possibly Portland at one point, but ultimately the Milwaukee Bucks are the benefactor here of Damian Lillard's trade request. They land him in this deal, and it's a really good one, um, in my opinion, for the Milwaukee Bucks. Getting guard Damian Lillard, not only is he a tremendous offensive player, we know what he's capable of with the ball in his hands, the range that he uh, can shoot the basketball with, the ability to put the ball in the hoop. He's uh, still a very good slasher, despite most of his finishes being below the rim. He's still very efficient. He's adept at getting past his man. And I think Lillard's range and his creativity as a scorer is going to complement Giannis Antetokounmpo very, very well in Milwaukee. And then you look at Chris Middleton now being the third option with the Bucks. That's probably one of the stronger, if not the strongest third option in the league from a scoring standpoint. Obviously Phoenix, you know, the Suns would have something to say about that, but the Bucks are extremely talented now. They have two guys who averaged over 30 points a game last year in Dame and Giannis. And when you have two guys on a first name basis in the NBA, you're probably doing pretty well in terms of the talent on your roster. Now look, they did have to give up a lot to get here. They give up guard Drew Holiday. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in some potential Drew Holiday trades from the Blazers perspective, that's why that little asterisk is on the graphic. Make sure to go check the channel. One hour after this video comes out, a Drew Holiday trade package video will come out where I break down a bunch of different teams possibly interested in Drew Holiday and what some potential packages the Blazers could net would look like. So definitely go check that one out after this video. Drew Holiday, who was absolutely essential in their 2021 finals run, of course, won the title against the Phoenix Suns. Funny to see those teams now working together in a trade centered around Damian Lillard. But ultimately, that's what we see here. Then you're looking at guard Grayson Allen going from Milwaukee as well. Uh, in this deal, he will no longer be a Milwaukee Buck. That's one thing that they did sacrifice here. A little bit of depth in the backcourt. They sacrificed depth holistically. And they took a little bit of a gamble here with the selections that they traded away in this as well for the long-term future of the franchise. They have already owed draft picks from the original Drew Holiday trade. And now upon trading Drew away, they give up some more assets as well. As Adrian Wojnarowski reported, a 2029 first round pick completely unprotected goes to Portland. That's extremely important given the circumstances of Giannis's contract uh, and when it technically expires and how that could be a potential threat for Portland to use later as a draft pick as Scoot and Shaden kind of enter their prime. 
And then they also get pick swaps in 2028 and 2030, again, completely unprotected. So those are some assets for the Blazers to work with. And as the Blazers theoretically get better, the Milwaukee Bucks might age out a little bit. Looking at the average age of this roster, Brooke Lopez is well into his 30s. Dame is well into his 30s. Giannis, yes, he's a really great player, but he's into his late 20s at this point. And there's some contract concerns, but this is why it's still a home run trade for the Milwaukee Bucks. The biggest, most kind of concerning question around the Milwaukee Bucks this offseason was the rumors around Giannis Antetokounmpo. Could he potentially ask for a trade at some point? Does he want to potentially leave Milwaukee? And he was kind of soft dropping some of these rumors himself, talking about how he needs to feel like he has chances to win championships. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, bringing in Damian Lillard definitely enhances your opportunity to win an NBA title. Now, X's and O's wise, when you go up against a team like Miami, when you go up against a team like Boston, there's going to be still some of those same structural issues that they had from a year ago, where they're going to be liable to three-pointers, especially in drop coverage and with Brook Lopez on the floor. But when you look at the actual roster on paper, you have to feel good about your chances, especially when you have two really high volume scores, your ability to put up points in the playoffs should be really, really elite. And I think Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo, there's a real possibility here that within a month into the season, we could be talking about them as the actual just flat out best duo in the NBA. I think that's a real possibility in terms of the offensive talent. Giannis, of course, does a lot on the defensive end and the glass as well. I think those two guys are really good natural fit. Their high pick and roll game is going to be really intriguing. Uh, and I just think naturally these two guys are going to be awesome together. Uh, so from the Bucks' perspective, you have to give this grade an A. If they win a championship, it's an absolute home run. And even if they don't, they're at least putting themselves in a position to compete for championships. And that's really all you can ask for from a front office perspective of, hey, did you get something to a spot where you feel pretty good about what you have on your roster? And I think the Bucks have done that here with this trade. Although it did cost a lot, there is some of that long-term risk. But I think, again, it's still a home run for the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, and I feel really good about this move for them in terms of enhancing their current championship window and also keeping Giannis content in Milwaukee. So transitioning into our second team to talk about in this video, that's the Phoenix Suns. I saved the Portland Trailblazers for last. I feel like their situation is very unique and interesting, and I wanted to save that for last in this one. So let's jump into the Suns here. Ultimately, they traded away center DeAndre Ayton. They also did trade away Tamani Kamara. He should be on the graphic, but he hasn't played a game for the team, uh, a real game yet. I think he was a solid draft pick out of Dayton second round. I think they did a good job selecting him. Obviously gets rerouted in this one to Portland. Uh, but they do receive a lot. And this is a really a, a reshaping of their bench and kind of that consolidation at the center spot, which we've heard rumored for a long time now. Center Yusef Nurkic will be the starting center for the Phoenix Suns on opening night, I would have to assume. And look, Yusef Nurkic, I don't think he's a great defensive big. I know there's been some people pondering his defensive ratings and some of his uh, defensive analytics. And look, when you're a great defensive rebounder, some of your defensive analytics are going to pop a little bit more than they should. I don't think that Nurkic gives them a lot of rim protection. I don't think he's going to be a real anchor for them. But I do think when they do get stops on the perimeter or at least hold up enough on the inside, Nurkic will rebound the basketball for them. And I think that's a really big advantage that, look, Phoenix going into this year, I don't know if I would have trusted Ayton to be a consistent rebound grabber uh, and a guy who is just going to be a board chaser. That's not Ayton's game. Nurkic does that a little bit more. That's a big positive here for the Phoenix Suns. You also get Nasir Little, who I think is on one of the better contracts in the NBA. Now, Nasir Little's not a huge build around player. You know, there's a lot of buzz around him sometimes. I don't think Nasir Little's like a top six guy in a playoff rotation, but I think at $7 million and a young player, there's still a small amount of room to, for him to grow. I'm not a big believer in, oh, age is the same as potential. Those two things are not necessarily tied together as much as people believe, but he is still relatively young and perhaps with the new coaching staff, Frank Vogel, he, Nasir Little has some defensive traits and the athleticism to be at least a weapon for them in some ways. Uh, and for a team that needed more options to say the least off the bench, Nasir Little definitely gives them that on a good long-term contract that is very, very cheap, especially as the cap ascends. Grayson Allen, really nice kid. He's a very good catch and shoot three-point shooter. I think the Milwaukee Bucks are gonna miss him a decent amount. I'm not the biggest Grayson Allen fan. Uh, he just happens to trip too many players for me to really like him. 
but I do think Phoenix Suns fans are going to appreciate his actual talent and what he'll bring to the team, especially with how thin the Suns were. Look, they've done a lot of work this offseason to improve their bench, but sometimes those minimum contract guys are hard to rely on. Grayson Allen's going to be a little bit more consistent for you. You know what you're going to get out of him a little bit more on a night-to-night -night basis, and I think that's going to be important for Frank Vogel as he kind of analyzes his options off the bench. Keon Johnson, you know, this situation here for Keon, I like Keon Johnson as a prospect, as a guy who, you know, he's extremely athletic. He's a kind of dynamic ball handler, shifty out in space. But really at this point, he's kind of more of a transition and play finisher. That's a lot of what he does in advantage situations. I don't expect him to do a lot for Phoenix this year. Now, I do think there is some intriguing lineups uh, that maybe he could be a part of, especially when the big three in Phoenix is on the floor. Uh, that's kind of the advantage I think he could take advantage of with his speed and athleticism. But ultimately, he's probably the fourth most important player that Phoenix is receiving in this deal, uh, simply because the other guys are a little bit more proven, probably receive more minutes right out of the gate for the Phoenix Suns this year. But look, at the end of the day, my grade for this, for Phoenix, I, you know, I don't even think that they did bad in terms of what Aiton's become and, and kind of the reasoning behind making a deal like this. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give it a C. Uh, I, I think... At, for me, Yusuf Nurkic is on a negative contract, in my opinion. I think a year and a half, two years from now, this is going to be kind of a tougher deal to move, um, just because I don't think there's going to be a lot of teams interested in Nurkic at that point. Um, so you're basically looking at a salary dump type of contract, or you could use it to match money, maybe, uh, which there's some value in that, I guess. But I don't love it, essentially. Uh, Nasir Little, like I said, he's a, he's a good budget player. I don't think he's a top six guy in a rotation, especially in a playoff rotation. And... For what Grayson Allen's worth, he's a bench player. So you essentially took all of these players that, yes, they have some meaningful depth piece for you, maybe a seventh, eighth guy, this year little, maybe a ninth guy. Yusuf Nurkic is by all means a starting center, I guess. Um, him and Drew Eubanks are going to share a lot of the starting center minutes, I would assume. Uh, both of them will probably play 20 to 30 minutes a night, um, which we saw that in Portland. Didn't go great in Portland. Phoenix will give it a shot here. We'll see how that goes. Um, but ultimately, DeAndre Ayton was a former number one overall pick. And you can say, well, yeah, he's not a franchise cornerstone for them, though. And I agree with that. And I can also say, look, Ayton wasn't the best fit with this team. Those things can be true, but still in my mind, when I evaluate this, I'm looking at the value lost here. And I just think that you know, aside from the fact that they passed on the possibility of drafting Luka Doncic uh, first overall that year, obviously that's a huge loss as well in terms of the value, but just analyzing what Aiden is, who I, I do think he is a guy who's going to continue to put up numbers, uh, and I do think there's more talent uh, there on the right side of the graphic than there is on the left side. And for me, you know, obviously the Suns aren't reliant on needing a bunch of talent right now, uh, but at some point, you know, Kevin Durant's going to age out of the league at some point. Hopefully he plays for a long time. I love watching really great players play basketball. But at the end of the day, we're going to be looking in three, four years, and we're going to see Devin Booker and a bunch of people who aren't on the roster currently. And the Suns don't have really picks to amplify their talent either. So there's going to be some challenges here. I thought DeAndre Ayton would have been an important long-term piece for them uh, to at least sustain some of Booker's career. Uh, but clearly the Suns, very aggressive with Matt Ishbia. They're going a different direction. And because of that, I give it a C grade. I don't think it's completely damning, uh, but I don't think I would have made this trade individually as the owner or GM of the Phoenix Suns if I were in that position. Then looking at the Blazers, again, this is my favorite team to talk about in this deal. The Bucks, of course, you know, yes, they got Damian Lillard. That's super exciting. I'm so excited to watch them. But Portland's really the one that kind of held the cards here in these trade negotiations. A lot of people expected Miami to walk away with Damian Lillard. Ultimately, Portland said, nope, that's not happening. And they got this package instead. And I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this package. So make sure to leave a comment down below. They got Drew Holiday. Remember, there's going to be a video up on the channel about him potentially in other trade packages. So that video is going to be out an hour after this one. Make sure to go watch it. That's going to be a very informative video and look at a bunch of different teams. They also get center DeAndre Ayton, which I think is a very nice piece for this team, especially with some of his perimeter skills as kind of a back to the basket post score, somebody who likes to shoot 15 foot jump shots, even if your team doesn't want him to shoot a bunch of them. A bunch of them, I think he's an interesting fit next to Shaden Sharp and Scoot Henderson because he can step out and kind of leave the paint open 
for slashers in a way that a lot of other bigs typically don't. Uh, because of that, I think the Aiton's going to be a nice little piece for them. Uh, they get Tamani Kamara, which is a nice little budget addition um, while you're making a trade like this. You want to get as many decent pieces as you can. I like Kamara for them, uh, kind of an athletic wing out of Dayton. And then here's the picks. The, again, the 2029 first via Milwaukee, and then also via Milwaukee swaps in 2028 and 2030. Those are nice assets to at least add to your treasure chest. The Blazers were kind of working with a pick deficit based on what they owed the Chicago Bulls uh, from what was the Larry Nance, Lori Markinen big swap with the Cavaliers a, a couple years back. So getting some more assets in is good. And now people are going to look at this and say, whoa, how is this better than the package from the Miami Heat? Because they're going to count the picks. Supposedly the Heat offered two first rounders and Tyler Hero. So people are going to look at this and say, whoa, DeAndre Ayton, Tyler Hero, like maybe pick your choice there between those two guys, but only one first and two swaps. And then people are going to assume, well, clearly the Blazers just didn't want to trade with Miami. No, I think there's a big aspect to this. And again, it comes back to that video that I'm going to have out right after this one. The Drew Holiday trades are what really shakes this up and changes the dynamic of this deal because they get to go out into the market again, later trade Drew Holiday and add assets on top of this package. So really what they're going to ultimately receive at the end of the day is DeAndre Ayton, Tumani Kamara, a first rounder via Milwaukee in 2029, swaps in 28 and 30, and then also potentially one or two extra first round picks in a deal for Drew Holiday, plus whatever that team uses to match salary. Maybe that could be like a Malcolm Brogdon type player who maybe you can go out and reroute into some second rounders. Ultimately, Portland could string this into two, three, four deals hypothetically and maximize the value here on Damian Lillard by getting asset after asset after asset. You might say, oh, well, if they get all these second rounders, who cares? Well, Mike Schmitz is a really good drafter. He knows what he's doing, especially in the second round. They already grabbed Jabari Walker, who I think is really nice. They have some nice, intriguing young pieces on this team. The Blazers are in a really good spot, and this really kind of vigorates their rebuild here with Scoot Henderson now being the starting point guard of the franchise. Shaden Sharp's going to get a ton of opportunities this year to put the ball in the hoop. I think he's going to do a great job as well. I'm a big believer in Shaden Sharp. Um, as someone who mocked him consistently in the top 10 with him not even playing a college game, uh, you know, I was a big believer in his game pre-draft. I'm a big believer in his game now, probably even more so now. Uh, and I think the Blazers do have a really bright future ahead of them. Uh, and, you know, the writing was on the wall. The day that the lottery happened and they moved up to pick three, I literally recorded a pick three trades video and a Damian Lillard trades video. Ultimately, we landed on the Damian Lillard trade situation where he got dealt. They kept pick three, and I think it was the right decision for them. Uh, ultimately, I think Scoot Henderson is going to be really, really awesome. Uh, I like this young core. I like the pieces that they have. Uh, and really, it all it all comes down to Scoot, Shaden, DeAndre Ayton, and whatever else they can draft because this team's not going to be very good this year. They're going to have another high pick likely. They're going to be able to continue adding young pieces to the core. Yes, it hurts to see a franchise legend like Damian Lillard be traded away. So Blazers fans, if you miss Dame, leave a comment down below. Let me know how much how much you miss Damian Lillard. I love hearing from you guys. Uh, and typically, you know, you guys have a lot of insight to your own team as well. So I'd love to hear from you guys your thoughts. Also, remember that Drew Holiday trade video is out. But here's the overall vibe. Uh, Portland did well. If I had to give them a grade, I'd probably say it's an A-. minus. Uh, you know, maybe you think that there's a better offer out there. Potentially. That's the hard thing is I'm kind of grading this without knowing all of the selection of offers that they could have had. But ultimately, they negotiated something that they felt good about. Uh, and I think that the value was there for them, especially if they're able to reroute Drew Holiday successfully. Phoenix made a decision. That's the vibe I have around Phoenix right now. I don't love it for them. I think that they could have done better in other deals potentially around DeAndre Ayton. I think that they maybe would have been better off long term without trading DeAndre Ayton, but they took a real risk here. If it pays off with the championship, kudos to them. I'm really, really unsure that it will. Uh, and because of that, I'm not in love with their decision. Remember, I gave them a C. Milwaukee is scary for now. Now, listen, there's still long term possibilities that this Milwaukee team falls apart, uh, especially if Giannis a year from now, let's say they don't win the title this year, and he's looking at 34-year-old Damian Lillard, 36-year-old Brooke Lopez, Chris Middleton into his 30s, and he might say, whoa, what do we got here in Milwaukee? While you still owe picks to New Orleans, you owe picks now to 
Portland as well. There is real risk in this for Milwaukee, but ultimately they put themselves in a position to possibly keep Giannis, keep him happy for now, which is the most important thing. And then secondly, they have a shot at a title, which is partially why Giannis is happy. Uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I can't fault them. I really can. If I was in their shoes, I would probably consider making the exact same move that they made. And then ultimately, the NBA got its wish. Uh, you know, the NBA memo that he sent out about Damian Lillard trying to force his way to one team and how that's not good for the league. Ultimately, the league is very, very happy that Damian Lillard is probably not in Miami right now. Not that the league has anything against Miami specifically, but they don't like it when players try and strong arm their way and give a list of one team and say, I'm not gonna go show up to training camp. They're very, very happy that a situation like this resolved itself with Dame getting traded to a team that wasn't on his initial list. That's a good thing for the NBA. It's good for the way that the CBA is structured and everything like that. So that's a huge win as well, not only for the NBA, but also for fans. Just, yes, it's a player's league. Players should get to choose where they get to play, but that should be a free agency decision predominantly. So far in recent years, it hasn't been. Uh, and that's of course something we're gonna have to continue seeing how it kind of plays out with the new CBA as well. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. Make sure to like up the video, subscribe to the channel as well for more great content. Don't forget that Drew Holiday video is coming out super soon. So you wanna be subscribed, hit that notification bell for more and we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.